In this example, we're going to use a goodness of fit chi-square test to see if a sample of values is normally distributed. So here we have a sample of 50 test scores. These are going to be our x values. And we want to determine if these test scores are normally distributed. The first thing that we're going to do is assume that they're normally distributed with the mean of x bar and a variance of s squared. In other words, we're going to assume that the data that the, that the x variable is normally distributed with a mean of 68, that's just our x bar from this data table, and a variance of 108. The first thing that we're going to have to do is to categorize the data into bins. Recall that these test scores aren't ordinal or, nom or, nominal or nominally measured. They are ratio measured. So we're going to split the data up into groups. When we make these groups, we need to construct them in such a way to guarantee that the expected number of observations in each group is at least five. Remember that that's one of the requirements of conducting a goodness of fit test, that E sub i is greater than five. E sub i is greater than five for all i. This, in mathematics, just means, well, let me do it properly for all. So we ca in order to guarantee that we have at least five observations in, in each bin, we're going to divide n, the number of observations, by five to compute how many bins we need to have. So in this case, we had 50 test scores. So 50 over 5 equals 10. So if we group the data into 10 bins, we, will, we can do it in a way that guarantees that we have at least five observations in each bin, or five expected observations in each bin. So in that case, uh, this C over here is five. But it doesn't have to be five. It just means that C needs to be greater than five. So we can split the data up into a smaller number of bins, and therefore the expected value in each bin would be greater than five. That would be OK, too but we can never split the data up into bins such that the expected value of any bin drops below five. So in order to split this data up into bins, we're going to use the normal curve, and we're going to select regions from the curve with equal probabilities. So if this is a normal curve, what we are going to, and we know that we need to have 10 bins because we decided over here that if we divided the data up into 10 bins, we could expect to see five observations in each bin. So what we are going to do is take the normal curve, this is a standard normal curve, and, and split it up into 10 equal regions, such that the probability of each region is 10%. So the area under the curve over here is 10%. The area in here between these two cuts is 10%. The area over here is 10%. Each of these zones has exactly 10% of the probability. And down below, we have the z-scores that form these breakpoints. So the first region over here is from negative infinity to minus 1.28. The next one is from minus 1.8 to minus 0.84, and so on. Okay. So what we have here are the z-scores that define these regions that have 10% of the probability. 